Hey, today let's look at Zechariah chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Receive the gift from the captives, from Heldah, Tobiah, Jediah, who have come from Babylon, and go the same day and enter the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Take the silver and gold, make an elaborate crown, and set it on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Then speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, from his place he shall branch out, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Yes, he shall build the temple of the Lord. He shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule on his throne. He shall be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace shall be between them both. So the high priest never really wore a crown. He did wear a, a golden headpiece that said holiness to the Lord across the top. But he never wore a crown. That, uh, and so this has led to, if you look back into the Bible, commentaries are commenting on these verses we're looking at today. There's a lot of discussion back there about, you know, like, uh, well, it must have actually been uh, Zerubbabel's crown, and, and they make all these explanations. Actually, everything in the text just points to the fact that the crown was for uh, Joshua. So I, I'll just go with that, guys. You know, the text says Joshua. So some of the captives, they are returning from exile, and they, they come and they bring these precious metals, and that's going to be forged into a crown, and it will be a crown for Joshua. And, you know, Joshua's spiritual leadership is going to do an enormous amount to bring blessing to God's people. And so he's put right out there in front, and there's some encouragement here for him. So I said before a few presentations back that we're going to come back to the branch. And here we are, we're in chapter 6, and in verse 12 it talks about, Behold the branch. And a lot of this seems like it's referring to Zerubbabel. But the branch always comes back, the preeminent person, we've got to go through the whole Bible, we've got to take everything in there, we've got to look at the context that's in the Word itself, and if we look at the Bible, it, it never really comes back to one guy, one person, one famous prophet, I mean Moses, top Moses, top Elijah, and yet, and yet it does, the Bible always does, and the preeminent one from, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible, you all, you all know it, don't you, the preeminent one is Jesus, and so, the branch is Jesus. He is the root out of dry ground. Surely he is the one, the ultimate one being referred to. Yes, the high priests, the, the spiritual leaders, yes, the civic leaders, they do things, they point to Jesus. But the ultimate fact is that Jesus is the one. Jesus is the preeminent one. And so we, we look to Jesus all the way through. He is the ultimate combination of priest and king. And so that's how it's going to be. I mean, look at the book of Hebrews there, uh, which shows Jesus as our high priest. All the human kings and priests prefigure Jesus, but Jesus is the ultimate. He, these things are symbols that point to him. But he is always the, the ultimate one. He's the one that died on the cross. No one else dies on the cross for us, only Jesus. Someone might think, well, we, we have the Pope. What do you Protestants have? And some, someone might say, to the, say to the, uh, about the Catholic priesthood, well, we're above that. We don't have that. We, have the, we don't have a priest. We go directly to God. And you know what's interesting about this is, and without meaning to offend anybody, what I would say to the Christian is, you do have a high priest. You do. It's just, it's Jesus who's your high priest. And I would say to the Catholic too, you do have a priest, but Jesus is your high priest. So, you know, improve on Jesus. You know, just try. Yeah, there, there is no improving on Jesus. He's the branch, he's the root out of dry ground, he is our hope. The text talks about the glory, and you know what? It says that Jesus is going to bear the glory. God completely, 100%, he is man completely, 100%, and in him divinity and humanity are combined. It says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The Bible commands us to have the mind of Christ. Well, either that's like some kind of a weird carrot and stick thing, you know, that you really can't achieve, or else it's true, and I believe it's true. We can have the very spirit, the very attitude, the very mind of Jesus. And so if we are connected with him, all he will receive all the glory and we will have all the benefits of that connection. So it's a good thing to have the branch. Jesus is certainly the branch. And every, every other representation is a smaller one that's kind of pointing up to Jesus. Mm -hmm.